everybody. Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Yeah, it's it's been a while. <laughs> what, like a month or two since we did one of these? Yeah, be at least two months. Yeah, the last time we actually did a proper tale of four gamers, um, like uh, it was probably a bit longer than that. So, um, hello everybody, welcome to Tale of Four Gamers. This is what we're calling uh, Tale of Four Gamers November update. Uh, and the reason we're calling that is because we've done loads of stuff and we've got lots of new toys to play with, um, but. We haven't actually got a game to do at the moment, and we'll get into why at the moment. It's because there was a few options we had planned, and then all or none of them are suddenly happening at the same time, which is a bit weird. Lovely to see everybody. We've all been basically doing interesting things. We've been playing games and building models and building armies. We've been doing loads of other stuff, which is what happens when we don't have any. Uh, we don't have any constru anything constructive to do. So we've been like. <laughs> Building terrain, I've learned to use, and we'll go through this, not only a laser cutter, but another 3D printer. Gary's been doing cosplay. There's just, I mean, it's just been, I've been, and I've been around the world. So yeah, how is everybody? Russ, how, how have you been for a couple of months? Um, yeah, um, really good, actually. Um, my health has drastically improved, and so I've been doing lots and um, playing games and um, yeah. painting models and joining in campaigns and stuff. Yeah, it's been so, a bit busy. Bobby, yeah. you've been you've been at the theme park. I, I haven't done quite as much as some of the rest of you. Um, I've been busy with with work and being, as you can see here, probably uh, being ill, which oh, no. isn't great for productivity. Yeah, I, I have managed to get out. I managed went down to bring out your lead, which yes. is. Yeah, really good nice. fun. Had had a couple of games there. That was that was a very good. Uh... And then Gary, you've probably got like an hours long uh, episode of this just on your own with the amount yeah. of stuff you've done in the last two months. I've had a lot of geeking activity. You've it's had a good. lot of geeking to do. So yeah, we'll get to that. But the bit there's a few big talking points. But before we start, one of the things I've been doing, and we've all been sort of following along with, is um is learning some new stuff. So I've got two things to talk about. Two people sent me stuff and. It's a bit of an interesting one, like the learning curve for this. The first thing I've been doing, I've been using both of them to make terrain. I've been making terrain for epic scale, which we shall get to um, for obvious reasons. But I've been learning how to use a laser cutter, which is a really terrifyingly good tool. I had a, my first go of it last week, and it's um, scary how effective it is. Has anyone actually used one before? Yeah, I, yeah. I used to have one um, that I managed to... Uh, can't remember who it was gave it to me now, but someone had one and was like, I, I've, got, I've got to get rid of it. But yeah, I didn't have space for it at home, yeah. sadly. Yeah, well, so I was offered, um, basically, I got offered a, a, a laser a laser cutter. A company called Algo Laser got in touch. They've been making laser cutters and they're releasing a new version, the Algo Laser Delta. It's got a bed of about, I think it's about 450 mil by 450 mil. And I was a rigid, initially I was like a bit, I, I asked a load of questions because I was like, do we have space for this? I mean, it's something I would have to use in my, workplace because they're quite large things. I don't necessarily have a lot of use for engraving things, but obviously in hobby world, there's an awful lot of like laser cut terrain and things like that, which, and we all started coming up with ideas for what we might do if I said yes. And I was a bit like, well, is this a good idea? Will we use it? Originally, we were having all these ideas to do it before we did the fifth edition video. We were going to make like custom fallen giant templates for Gary and movement trays and things like that. But anyway, I said I said yes, but it was a bit delayed, and then I was away, so I haven't really had a chance to use it. It's been sitting in the studio for a month, and then I finally got it out this week, and um, it's it's really quite impressive. Really ridiculously simple to use was the biggest thing. I was sort of worried about how much time I'd have to figure out how it works, but pretty much I assembled it, plugged it in, tr used its you know the standard light burn software to just make a little square and try it out on a bit of test wood, and it, it, like I, I just sort of hit go expecting it to have an error and the thing immediately just like in one second cut me my little square out. I think that day I essentially, I, I, I thought, okay, well, I'll do a project. Opened up Illustrator, which isn't a project of stuff where I use very often, um, and drew myself a little set of gothic building templates for um, uh, potential for epic games really, really quickly. It took about an hour. And then that evening, cut them all out. And it, it like I was just I was expecting it to be a lot more complicated than that. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's so, pretty straightforward um, compared to uh, a three D printer, for example. Yeah, that's the other thing I've been doing. Yeah, but the, it was like ridiculously easy to use. I was really, really surprised. So I've 
built a load of epic terrain with it. That's that's what I did. And it looks like it's going to be something useful. that's actually really useful. Well, I mean, in theory, I could do I could do full scale 40k terrain, you know, as long as it fits on on that oh, yeah. print bread, I can, can do whatever we need to. And, but yeah. And now you've designed it, all you've got to do is scale up your designs to yeah. a little bit to make them fit scale and then you can do them again. That's I mean, I, one of the advantages. I did do these really quickly. <laughs> like, um, so, I mean, I might put a bit more work in now. This was literally the work of like, Honestly, like an hour and a half in in Illustrator, and then I think I, well, it's an interesting thing trying to get the laser level right. Like, as in the controls you have for how it works. I don't know if it's the same with all of them. Certainly, the one the one I've got, the Alga laser. You essentially get a speed at which it cuts, a number of passes it's going to do, and a power level. So you go right, okay. You, you have to do a few tests and go right. Well, this is the material, and I'll do a few tests and see what what it will take to cut through it. And I'm, I've not really looked into it, but I would assume if you do it really slowly on full power with some materials, that's quite dangerous because you might overheat it or set fire to something. So uh, yeah, you want multiple, fire, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, you want like, sl if you do it really slowly on full power, that's a bit, if you do it really fast, you won't cut it. So, so there's a bit of experimentation to do. I did manage to, so you need something good underneath it. Um, I did manage to, um, uh, there is now a flight case in the studio with an impression of tiny little gothic windows burnt into it. Um, <laughs> from from I went must have been slightly overpowered from what I needed. It took, took that took a little bit of getting used to, but yeah, it it was surprisingly easy. So thanks, we've got a fantastic new little tool, and thanks for that algo laser. The other thing I got set, and this was also over summer, so sorry I haven't talked about this before, is that um, Elegoo have sent me their Mars Four. Oh, wow. um, which means we've been using a load of their stuff because then I gave the Mars 3 to Gary for a cosplay project we'll get to later. I've got the Elegoo Mars that I finally got working. Yeah, so we've all basically, all the printers I've ever had are now distributed. <laughs> uh, Bobby, Bobby, you've already got a 3D printer, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and I, I've ever, unfortunately got an AnyCubic printer. I'm, I'm, I'm not even on brand. Damn, so. well, look, I mean, you know, the next the next one you can swap Mars. around and we can all just be waving our red Elegoo Marses around at various different numbers. <laughs> They've also sent me a Mars 4, and I thought I'd use that to print uh, some more terrain so I can I can try them out and, and compare them. So this is much higher detail than the last one I had. It's like 8 by 4 k so 8K in total. Uh, resolution, which has been really nice. I've I've been using it to build buildings though, which isn't something I've done before. It, honestly, I'm probably it's probably the sort of thing I sh you should use a, a filament printer for, but I don't have the space for one of those. So I've been <laughs> building these resin buildings. Interesting scale things. Epic buildings are probably going to be fine for Legionnaires Imperialis, which is why we're why we're doing all this. But they're they're quite chunky things buildings especially resin ones i've been getting Same blender out so. yeah, i know right i've got blender out and i've been chopped just basically my blender skills are at the level of i can hollow something out so i've been hollowing it out to use less resin but obviously yeah it's interesting to compare the two like the elegu printer obviously allows me to print things that are much higher detail but much slower like even with a very fast printer like that you're still you know the time difference is four or five hours to print a couple of buildings rather than 15 minutes to print a sheet of MDF. Uh, MDF. Um, uh, the buildings obviously look fantastic. They're really lovely and really detailed and coming out as fast as a resin printer will. Uh, and they turn how, out really lovely. How precise are each of them? Could you like do a shell on the laser printer, uh, cut out windows, but then print yeah. a whole bunch of teeny tiny windows, which will easily just push into each hole and then print off like crenellations for a roof? Yeah. Or would that just be like, well, it doesn't quite print right and I have to file it down to make it fit and that's loads, oh, blah, blah, blah. I think you'd probably have to um, do some experimentation because you do get yeah. um, a little bit of shrinkage with the resin and mm -hmm. things like that. So there'd be like... If you're cutting to exactly one size, then printing to exactly matching size and you shrink a tiny bit, you can just stick it in with a bit of glue and it will hopefully sit... Mm. I mean, you could right. it, certainly, if you look at these two, the, the, the difference is things like it's not the scale of the box, which is done much better with the, the cutter. Um, it's things like sticking out protruding windows and details on doors. And actually, that's a really good idea because what you could probably do mm. is essentially size the box that is the building. You could build the box that is the building. You don't need to cut that much out of it on the cutter and then essentially have a panel you put on each facing, which is a very thin, flat panel on a 3D printer. You could print whole rows yeah. of them, 
and you, like you know, like base toppers. Yeah, right? yeah. You know where you just get the the very thin level of terrain that goes sticks on a base. You could essentially do like facings of a building. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter if it's a slightly bit smaller or bigger, you know, because it would have all the window detail and door detail. Yeah, yeah. And it just essentially goes on a similar size box built out of MDF. I have got a cunning plan, actually, for another way of doing that. But then it, um, I kind of don't want to say it because I think it's going to make me a millionaire. Just about how to make good use of the laser printer rather than a simple box. So I'll, I'll talk to you off camera. Okay, fine. We're going to be millionaires. millionaires. Thank you, Alga Laser. We're going to be millionaires. (laughs) Um, And thank you, Elegoo. Yeah, so that's. I've been spending a bit of my time since I got back doing that, and I'm quite pleased with the results. Really pleasantly surprised by how how simple it was. That's that's the first thing to say. Uh, Laser cutters are fun. Uh, Terrifyingly (laughs) powerful and fun. Let's move on from that because the reason we're doing this is because of our planned next um, next thing and. We still don't really know what we're going to do, do we? Uh, our initial plan was to do Legionnaires Imperialis, which our plan was to start that in like September when it was released. And those preview copies went out, I know, but for some reason it's been delayed. The other thing we had vaguely in the back of our minds as a next summer thing was the old world. And that looks like it's happening sooner. So we've got a bit of a dilemma, <laughs> gang. What should we do? <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> This is the thing, um, right? It's very likely now that Legionnaires Imperialis is coming out some point in November before Christmas, and Old World might be as early as February. What What's more attractive? Do we we're gonna do? We're probably gonna play both, but do we have time to do both on the channel? My fear is that the like the core box is going to come out for Legionnaires Imperialis, and then virtually none of the other units are going to be available for for months and months and months. It's going to be a real trickle of stuff, and it's going to be nearly impossible to build an army. Um, that that's, it does seem like a thing that Games Workshop have been doing recently. Is it, <laughs> it just take, takes forever for the whole <laughs> game to come out, um, mm. which might be a bit of a pain in the bum because we you know, want to get on and play it. I mean, there's an argument yeah. that like we do it mostly. We could do Legion as Imperialis, but do it mostly with the um, box contents. You don't have like it's not going to be those complicated armies, but you could at least we could at least like. Get the box painted up. Add some. Well, we have bit. um we have in the past revisited things. So mm. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world if we do a quick like visit to Legions Imperial, uh, yeah, Legions Imperialis, and sort of say, hey, that was fun. Um, now we want some more models, please, Games Workshop. And when you do, we'll do another bloody video. Yeah, that um, might be and fun. then do a bit of Old World. But I don't necessarily think it's the worst thing in the world to start one thing and start and a second thing before we finish the first. And as Bobby says, that might be the only way we can build the army. What are we all more excited about? Legions, for me. Yeah? You're, you're a, yeah. We'll get to your epic playing, but you, you've been doing a lot of epic <laughs> stuff. Inspired by Legions? So, so I've um, yeah, I've started making um, videos for... Yeah. What's that thing where all the videos go? Uh, oh, YouTube, no, of, Don't listen to anyone on that platform. Whilst, whilst 99% of um, YouTube creators are a bunch of... Awful. Like idiots, let's awful. be honest, Ian. Yeah. Um, awful human beings, frankly. Um, I decided that I quite fancied um, you know, showing everyone how to make a good video. Oh, great. Yeah, no. I've, I've deliberately started by doing bad ones to show what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've made, um, more seriously though, I've made a, a, a few videos about Legions Imperialis, at least partly because I was getting fed up waiting for it and I still wanted to be thinking about it. And so um, talked a lot about what I hope um, when it comes out and um, how I want to play the game. Yeah, and I can't quite get the uh, release rate that I'd like. Um, but as I get a bit quicker, hopefully I can start doing uh, at least, you know, most weeks, even if yeah. it's not every week. What are you, um, if, are you, do you know what you would be doing with Imperial Alice or Old World? Do you know what you're planning to build? So I'm pretty set on Loyalist because for, uh, I've been playing a lot of Net Epic, mm-hmm. which is like a, an evolution of the 1991 version of Space Marine. And for that, I've been doing Chaos, uh, yeah. Black Legion with a whole bunch of like trolls and Minotaurs and um, Tiger, uh, Tiger Eyes, Legio Furians, Titans. Mm-hmm. Um Got quite a nice shade of yellow in the flames for them. Um, so I think I want to do loyalists for legions, and I'm I have to do warp runners for the titans because that's my you know that's my loyalist titan legion. 
I watched a really good um, Richard Gray video where yeah. he um, shows how to do the flames really well. And I won't be able to do them as well as him, but, you know, I can hopefully at least copy him enough to make him look good. <laughs> so I decided what would look good with Warp Runners and what might be fun to play Blood Angels. Yeah, that's a very classic epic thing, isn't it? A blood, a-, a right red Blood Angels epic army. Yeah, I think it will look really good done mostly with um contrast um well blood angels red and apart from that all i've got to do is um gold and you know red and gold and a little bit of metallic and that's the blood angels you know you're going to want to do a little bit of something special once in a while but that's 90 percent of it and and reds are i think an easy color to make it look good Mm. contrast paint is going to be great for this well yeah and actually talking about old world as well um what i'm probably going to do to start with for old world Let's get the rest of these done. Um, quite a long time ago, yeah. I did some test um, blood letters, and now I've realised that that same army of corn I could use it for a ruin storm army for Horus Heresy. Yeah, and you know, so that can be an old world army. It can be a fifth edition army. It can be a Horus Heresy army. Um, I don't really think it's usable as a forty k army because I think it's worth you know. Whereas it's a full army and all those things, I think it's about four hundred points in uh, modern forty k. Yeah, but um, who plays yeah, that? Yeah, I think I'm. Quite keen on a lot of red. Yeah, brilliant. What about you, Gary? Are you are you are you thinking about because you've got a load of Titanicus stuff spare, haven't you? Yeah, so I've got the Titanicus, and I did buy quite a lot of terrain and stuff, um, but none of it's built. So mm. basically, it was to use the momentum of the new game system to get the terrain built, and then I would have it for both because they're very compatible, aren't they? Mm. They're the same scale. Yeah. Do you gonna? Do you know what you're gonna do? Yeah, I'll probably be boring and just do more space wolves. So ah. I just have. <laughs> Scale, same same army, but in different scales. What about the Titans? Yeah. Uh, I guess I could look through the lore and find out which one are wolf friendly, or just paint them grey and put a big wolfy skull on it, and you know I, they're. I think that's exactly what you should do. Yeah. No. <laughs> paint it grey with a great big wolf head on it. It's good to have. I think the Titans contrasting and looking different to the Space Marines. I think, like, if we're going to get Solar Auxilia in the box as well, I definitely want to do some Solar Auxilia, but I don't want to paint them red. I can see I can see how it works both ways. Um, I don't think in the fluff there isn't any Titan Legions on Fenris, is there? Like, because no. it's pretty. It is going to be juxtaposed, isn't it? It's going to be someone who's allied. Uh, yeah. There might be something in the fluff about like, oh, this Legion fought with the Space Wolves quite a lot, but I, I don't know off the top of my head which one it is. Yeah. What about Old World? I think for the start of Old World, my intention is to just buy the rule book. Um, have a look to see where the the Fimmer army can be crossed over. You know, using either the, the orcs and goblins again, or maybe because if it has ogre kingdoms in there, I can try and see if I can squish it into a, a more suitable army. What about you, Bobby? Do you do you have plans for? Do you actually have plans for what you're going to do for either of those games? Um, I've been thinking about it. I do already have some uh, Titanicus stuff. Mm-hmm. I've got some Legio Graphonicus, so that'd be loyalists as well. Classic choice. Yeah, so I'm I'm tempted to go with with doing some oil list to go with those, but equally I might just do a do some new titans and have a second titan army and do do traitors. I am very tempted to do um, Iron Warriors tank company, so just lots and lots and lots of metallic tanks with tiny hazard stripes, tiny, tiny hazard was... stripes, and I want to like digitally design the equivalent to the the spiky sprue that used to. Uh, or that I think still comes with chaos vehicles, so I can have yeah you know, all the little spiky railings with skulls on, but at <laughs> eight mil scale. Or my other idea, because it does seem from the the battle report we've seen that mixing detachments from different legions is also mm. a thing. So I might just do to go with the Griffonicus Titans. Do like mixed defenders of the palace, so Blood Angels. White scars, imperial fists, kind of all mixed That's a good together. Idea, actually. It's, it's, you know, just a detachment. It, it does sound like a bit of a power gamey move. So yeah, you know, have all my land speeders <laughs> yeah. be white scars. Have all my oh. uh, assault troops being blood angels. Have all my you know uh, chunky troop terminators and stuff being imperial fists. Um, you know what though? I think you know you've already got the reputation. You you clearly made the power gamer's choice with imperial fists for Horus yeah, Heresy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. Yeah, um, yeah the power yeah, gamer's that. choice to go with Undead for Fifth Edition. Although to be fair, you don't play Undead the same way some people play Fifth Edition Undead. Um, so you know you might as well go for the power gamer's choice and do a Siege of Terror loyalist <laughs> force for, for Legions as well. <laughs> 
Just what need to the... wait and see what you're going to do for Old World. Yeah, what's the power game's choice for Old World, Bobby? Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. As, as no one's seen any rules, that's going to be quite hard to, to judge straight away. But it's probably going to be Bretonians, isn't it? Let's be honest. I imagine it. The, yeah, the, 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 in the new box. Um, and are you planning to do Bretonians? Uh, no, I've, I've, I think I'm uh, similarly, I want to see what the rules are like. The uh, article that went up on Warhammer Community recently that just sort of previewed very bare minimum of like the turn sequence i wasn't the biggest fan of all the choices but i'm not going to judge it just on that i, I want my magic phase give me my magic phase um, <laughs> i want a deck of cards uh, said the i'm dead player yeah yeah exactly um <laughs> i don't have to remember to cast spells in every phase i just want to have to do it once all in one go yeah i, I will probably just do um like converter trays like movement trays that will space my minis out yeah. to the size that they should the footprint they should have for 25 millimeter bases because i'm not rebasing all that lot yeah um well, you know, hundreds and hundreds of minutes just to rebase no yeah. not not, not, well, not doing it you know what bobby i've um, um i've got a machine that will help you make those converter trays <laughs> yeah no, I, I was gonna i was gonna message you later um, <laughs> with some designs if they if they release some good new models, I'm tempted to try and do orcs and goblins because yeah. some of the later plastic orc kits that I never got around to buying because I just wasn't playing Warhammer Fantasy, you know, before the end times happened. I, I think an orc army would be an uh, interesting one to do uh, and a bit different from what I normally play. So. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking similar. I'm so for for old world, I've got a load of models I've just never used yet. Like I did demons for fifth edition i've also got other demons like slanesh demons and nurgle demons that are ready to go or haven't been painted or haven't used very much i've also got like a late 90s slaves to darkness army made of the really gorky gorky looking oh, chaos warriors guys yeah the, the hunchback, hunchback guys plastic. i really but, like, I like those loads. models i think that's entirely nostalgia though yeah yeah me too they're not great they're just but they, they were they were really <laughs> good multi-part kits every bit of the model like the chest and the arms and the left arms right arms heads chests and legs were on their own sprue so you could just build whatever you wanted i built ages ago like a a four age of sigma i put them all on round bases an army of them and i've never used them barely ever like a <laughs> one game i played with them um, so I quite like the idea of just putting them back on square bases and going, right, that's my Slaves to Darkness army. And I think Chaos Warriors are a proper army in Old World, aren't they? You don't even need to, though, Ian. Just do um, just do what I did for the last one and make your movement trays with circles in exactly. and, and put them on a movement tray. So and and actually, then they're easier to rank up as well. Yeah, yeah, they are. Those ones are really difficult to rank up, particularly. They were so weird yeah. and dorky. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so I think yeah. I think it'll be some sort of chaos for old world. I'm I'm tempted by doing a regular human army, or as as you say, Bobby, like just doing goblins. Like I've never done a massive goblin army, but um, <laughs> I, yeah, I've got a bunch of empire figures from the, the like the sixth edition monopose yeah. ones. I've got a bunch of those that I could just put on bases and yeah. slap some paint on as well. Like I've got I've got minis to that I could, if, if it's good, I could see myself building several armies. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do remember the um the uh when we did our fifth edition Tale of Four Gamers, the very first one, Ed was building something called I think it was the Grand Duchy of Monoposia. And everything was built <laughs> yeah, out of yeah, plastic yeah. monopose empire models. Yeah. Yeah. Einposen. It was Einposen. Einposen. That's it. Einposen. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. So so that's old world. I think I'll do some sort of chaos. And then Legionnaires Imperialis, I'm gonna do Solar Auxilia or like I'm not that bothered about the Space Marines. I would very much like a giant guard army. So my plan is hoover up the Solar Auxilia no one wants and get a massive Solar Auxilia army. Are they going like, to be pink? They're not going to be pink because oh. they're going to be loyalist because they're going to go with... The only models in that scale I've already painted are my Aeronautica Imperialis um, planes, which are black and yellow. So I'm going to do them black and yellow. Okay. So that's the yeah, idea, yeah. That would so, be and that's also the color scheme, like a Go ahead. color scheme like that for one of the solar auxiliary, uh, yeah. like vest bids or something like that. Something I think like. is yeah, something along those lines. It's so, sort of ringing a bell. And I've used it. I use it in when I play. I've done some forty k armies. I've used the sort of dark grey and yellow thing to do um, my Krieg equivalent and things like that. Because 
when we were playing things like the Vrax campaign and stuff like that. So, so at the minute, black and, pink tends to be what I use for all the chaos and black and yellow for all the Imperials. So they're all interchangeable. But yeah, it all depends when it comes out, doesn't it? It all depends. I could totally see, as, as, as you guys just said, like I could totally see a world where if it comes out in November, we do like a November, December, January update, maybe into February of Imperialis. And we just try and get like, let's play the book. Build the box set, paint the box set, play some games. Play it. Yeah, At least yeah. everyone that way, everyone can join in and get started with their ideas. And then maybe if old world is like February, March, maybe then we switch and do old world for a bit. Given a lot of us yeah. are mostly converting existing armies. Talking, I might be tempted to do a Tomb Kings. Tomb Kings. <laughs> it's because what Bobby yeah. said, the end of the era models were great. Yeah. And, um, Tomb Kings had that Negro Sphinx. Sphinx yeah, uh, Christmas, they, they yeah. had some really crazy, they, great big centerpiece models that. They had this sort of big snake as well, which were great. I was playing um, Tomb Kings last night against Nathan, um, Blood Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I was quite going, I could do the same color scheme across on, on mass. It was pretty easy. Maybe Tomb Kings. Maybe Tomb Kings. Tempted by by uh, a new game, but yeah. There's another thing I, I really want to do. I've got a huge box of miniatures from Nightmare Games. I've backed all three of their Pantheon of mm. Chaos Kickstarters. And I backed an Ian Miller Kickstarter, and I've got an Ian Miller Dragon coming fairly soon. And I wouldn't be able to use that at Warhammer World, and I like to make armies I can use at Warhammer World a lot of the time. But the corn army should be really, really quick. So I could try and do two old world armies, one of which is chaos, but like mortal chaos, another one which is demons, because mm. it would be fantastic to actually paint like the God knows how many hundreds of pounds worth of models I got from Nightmare Games and have barely touched since. Yeah. <laughs> Get them done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So look, we'll we'll, we'll plough through that. We'll see what happens. It might be the case that we are back with the Tale of War Gamers uh, Legionist Imperialis, you know, in three weeks. But um, let's Hopefully. see how that all goes. We'll, we'll see what happens. But for now, we've all been doing other stuff. So let's go through. We're going to do our updates as normal. It'll just be updates about random things. So let's start with, I think I've put Bobby first in our little document. So Bobby... Uh, yes. How have you been doing? You started off with, uh, since we last spoke, you started off with Bring Out Your Lead. Yes. It feels ages um, ago now. I, it, it was ages ago, but it's just been so long since we've done a video. Um, yeah. Had a great time at Bring Out Your Lead, as always. Well, um, can you explain briefly what it is? for? Uh... So, yeah, for, for those who don't know, Bring Out Your Lead is uh, a yearly gaming slash social event for mm. people who like old school miniatures. I don't think there's anything more definitive than that you get people playing all sorts a lot of a lot of games workshop systems but not it not just games workshop systems um it's hosted by foundry yeah i had a couple of good games i played a really good game against nathan's eldar um which of, uh, we're using my nova marines uh space marines second um, edition 40k second edition 40k yes um and <laughs> eldar are, are quite good in second edition yeah, i remember um <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they've been good in several editions, but second edition is definitely maybe their apex of being pr pretty good. Um, <laughs> Eldrad Ulthran riding on the back of a Viper jet bike was a thing you could do. Yes, yes. Casting spells on Wraithguard. <laughs> and Nathan did win. It was, I think, 15 victory points to 12 or something like that. Oh. It was it was a quite a close game, um, mostly because his, his dice rolling was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a good fun game. Uh, then we had a, a four-player game, a 2v2 game of uh, second edition, which, you yeah, know, making it even more difficult on ourselves. Um, <laughs> Myself and Russell with with his uh, lamenters um, against uh, Nathan Zeldar again and Chris who had squats. Yay! Um, so it's a bit of an unusual <laughs> uh, alliance of Eldar and squats. But you'd have um, loved me, and it was very old school squats. Yeah, yeah. and they're really like really some, some fantastic painting. Yeah. He, he keeps winning awards for his painting and things, and there's good reasons for it. An interesting game. The Lamentus didn't have a very I, good time. I, I, I think I would have won if it weren't for Bobby completely hamstringing our efforts and hanging me out to dry, frankly. <laughs> um, what, what, by sitting there and taking, I think, about three or four models casualties for the whole game for like the entire Lamentus getting wiped out. It was very much, they, they're on their penitent yeah. crusade. Yeah, on, and on just brand. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. My entire army got wiped out and Bobby lost like three models. I, we don't, lost. I don't think it helped that, that you're up against the Eldar who were stomping yeah. you into the, into oh, the ground. Hilarious. Whereas the Scots are a little bit a little bit easier to fight as Marines. <laughs> um, but yeah. it was a good fun game and some really stupid stuff happens as as happens with all second edition games if something if you don't roll on a random chart and something really funny happens you're not playing second edition right yeah <laughs> and this has inspired you to then get into painting some more old hammer when you got back yeah it did yeah i i enjoyed playing it so much that i thought oh well oh, i need to build a few more armies um <laughs> so i've been spending a lot of time on ebay rather than um actually building or painting stuff but um yeah i've sort of got together most of the bits for an imperial guard army which mm -hmm. is foolish of me because i this has got to be a la about the fifth or sixth imperial guard army i've started and i never finished them um <laughs> maybe i can break that maybe i can break that um cycle what um, model range bobby the the cadians or, um, or it's the gonna be even? it's gonna be a bit of a mix it's gonna be okay. ca mostly cadians with some talon um an ad hoc army yes yeah. as as um second edition imperial guard armies usually were though yeah. the, the whole, that's quite a mm. thematic for that era having a bunch of different regiments all mixed together um i'm weirdly building an adeptus mechanicus army which wasn't really a thing in second edition no. there were a few units that you could take as allies in what people call the black codex the sort of get you by lists that were in the um second edition box set so i'm gonna sort of put something together it's going to be a bit of a you have to have an agreement with your opponent to use it yeah. army because it's <laughs> going to be not not a standard army at all um but the it should be fun to build um i so see you've got the all the original assassins there as well i see the clade adamus assassin in an early rare early appearance getting there with assassins i do need to get a, a an eversaw assassin as well i haven't got a metal eversaw assassin but they're just a good. They're just good models. They yeah. they work. They work for all my armies. This is a, something I'm sort of thinking because I'm doing a lot of imperial stuff. If I only get one unit painted, I can still play that one unit because allies are more of a thing in second edition. Um, and a bunch more. I did a few more Nova Marines. I did some librarians because I got fed up with getting beaten over the head by uh, Eldar force, wizards. Yeah, you know, level four um, farseers. So I've got my own. Um, Chief Librarian for my Nova Marines and yeah, so yeah. lots and lots of old hammer That's, going on. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I have been spending a lot of more money on also. I, I have some Eldar, I have some Chaos. I've, I'm just going to do everything by the sound <laughs> of things for old hammer. You have been uh, continuing in the modern day with some Imperial Fists too. I have. Um, I've been trying to get a little bit more done for my Imperial Fist army because I didn't finish as much of it as I'd liked. Mm. There's still quite a lot sat in boxes and half finished, but also they keep releasing really nice looking character miniatures and I'm a sucker to just, <laughs> uh, expensive resin miniature. Yes, I'll have one of those, please. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've got a few of those. What, um, the Tyrant of Cthonia, I can, can, can never remember his um, actual name. Oh. I can resist that model. It's, like, it's such a yeah, cool it's a lovely model. And well, it was actually quite easy to paint as well. It, right. I've got yeah. to say, I've been, I've got some of the new Mark Threes as well. I'm gonna build a squad of regular breaches to go along with my two squads of Phalanx Warders, um, because I can't stop building space rooms with shields. Um, <laughs> and I think I'm also gonna build a squad of um, heavy support guys with assault cannons, because again, that's it's just a thing. Imperial Fist can do it, so why not? Wow. <laughs> Very good. Well, look, it's it's seeming productive. So, Russ, what? Now you've been operating at a slightly different scale since since we first mentioned Legion as Astartes, right? Legion Imperialis. Oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry, Legion as Imperialis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So around the same time that we were planning to start Legion Imperialis, a friend who Nathan and I know, he was starting up a, a net epic campaign. Yeah. So many of you probably heard of it, but net epic is basically for those listening who haven't is um, it's the development of the 1991 release of Space Marine and Titan Legions. Frustratingly, after you know some 30 years of playtesting, there's still quite a few things in the rule book where you go, there's nothing <laughs> to explain what just happened. There's, there's a gap in the rules here. Nevertheless, it is an immensely fun game. So I've been doing lots and lots of tiny little trolls and minotaurs, mm -hmm. lots and lots of tiny little Black Legion Space Marines. And um, yeah, some some titans 
from Tiger Eyes. Uh, so to help practice painting flames when I get onto the warp runners, these are yeah. easy flames, whereas warp runners obviously will be difficult flames. But yeah, that's that's inspired me. I'm going to mention it again just so people go and watch my videos. Um, inspired me to do uh, uh, YouTube videos about legions. And yeah, but playing a lot of that as well. It's actually been a really fun game. It's reminded me how much I loved it when I was in my sort of um, sort of early to mid teens. Yeah. And um, yeah, this net epic's got the same thing. I've played played about six or seven games now, and, and I haven't lost yet in the campaign. I've had a couple of draws in the campaign, but um, doing really well. Um, generally, managing to um, play very close games where I come out on top, which I think is the more or less perfect sort of game. Yeah. Uh, I remember at the same time, it was, yeah, about that age is when I last played Epic like that as well. So, And apart from that, played quite a lot of Underworlds, yes. um, especially mostly against Nathan. Um, and he's been um, beating me up quite a lot with his um, Sepulchral Guard. Yeah. I did. I did have a game where I came, um, was it, I can't remember now if it was against Sepulchral Guard or I think it was them. It might have been his Star Blood Stalkers, but I think it was the Sepulchral Guard where I was within one point of getting a draw with Black Powder's Buccaneers. And it was one of the proudest gaming moments of my life, quite frankly, <laughs> um, because Black Powder's Buccaneers are terrible. They are but I do absolutely love them. And every time I use them, I still have immense fun using them because they're <laughs> just fun, even when you lose with them. Um, but because Nathan keeps beating me with his um, sepulchral guard, I decided I should finish painting the ones that I started I started painting these before I ever even played the game because I just think they're amazing models. But because I've spent so much time dedicated to each and every model, they um, they never really got finished. So um, <laughs> they're now about that far away and I should be able to finish them tomorrow and send you some photos to maybe stick on the screen right now. Brilliant. Um, yeah, but that's the main things. Right. Well, I mean, I'll put the links to the YouTube uh, in the thing below. We've shared that a bit already, but then you can catch up with Russ and his epic odyssey see what i did there um uh <laughs> if you want some preparations legions we move on then to gary who's been having a productive few months haven't you gary yeah i mean a little bit of this bit of that like finishing off from the tournament i started um painting up the spartan going back to the Horus heresy yeah so now you've got an actual spartan so that got finished uh oh oh now's a good time to show the photo of your spartan last night gary i'm okay, getting getting ruined by your room <laughs> Yeah, first game uh, syndrome, isn't it? You bring a, a new toy to <laughs> Yeah, first thing to die, isn't it? Classic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it did really well for one turn. <laughs> <laughs> so so you've got so Spartan done for the Horus Heresy. Um, we'll get to Horus Heresy in a bit because we're playing that again. We do these the oval lists whereby, you know, you write down a few things you want to get done in the year. Yeah. I a little bit by putting half the boxes of my list as play games rather than paint and do more. <laughs> I've been playing uh, Warcry, Shadespire, played a few games of Blood Bowl with Nathan, and then we went to Folkestone to play a, a, a two-day Blood Bowl. Ogre Bowl. Yeah, you, you managed to yeah. stay in the worst hotel in the UK, according to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the hotel with the worst reviews, the Grand Burston Hotel. Yeah. All right, but it, it was, it had a really God's waiting room eras to it. You know. <laughs> it, it was like lawn singer at all these people wasting away their pensions. It was, yeah. <laughs> um, was, was the, was the, was the tournament in that hotel? It was, it was in a ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Menting Blood Bowl as the game for old grognards until Old World is released next year. Blood Bowl is famously Games Workshop's best best game. So you know, <laughs> uh, how did you do at Ogre Bowl? Um, I played. I, I think two wins, two losses. So you know, and you played with Fimir and like little Groblin people. Yeah, so you know, it got me inspired to paint up a few more. So I painted up six more uh, little bog goblins to um, uh, fill out my roster. I'm like pretty pretty full. Got sixteen of those before we even do the. <laughs> <laughs> including tiny gordon ramsay yeah he's great so he was oh, yeah. <laughs> that made me so happy to put that head on that model <laughs> <laughs> then we we went to another event like because i got back so i was away for three weeks we got back we went to SumpCon again 
Yeah, up to Belfer, which is up above Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah, really well organized, but well run event. Uh they've got so much Necromonda terrain at that club. It's it's unbelievable. It's, it's Sump City Radio, the podcast, the Necromonda podcast that run it every Basically, I think it, it's getting itself a good reputation. Like the, the quality of all the t- gangs that turn up are phenomenal. Like every table you look at, it's a beautiful, you know, set of scenarios playing out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a great time. And you went. How did you enjoy it? I, I really liked it again. Yeah, I took exactly the same thing I did last time with the a change of arrival. But your so I just took our bites again because I was away, as I said, for the month before. I didn't have time to paint anything new, so it was the same gang with. Um, a different robot with a new robot um and yeah it's really really fun it's like an open-ended gaming experience it's it's open play there's a bit of a campaign system but you don't need to play it we didn't bother playing it um we just played games and i bought a load of spare things um but you actually have new models for that you've been painting squats yeah i mean i'm a little bit addicted to painting squats it's almost like every month or two i've got a new idea for a new thing so um last year the only thing had for the ash wastes was a rock grinder so i needed more mobility around the ash waste because it's a bigger table more gap spaces uh, so i painted up three uh, squats on uh, surfboards like bansar converted surfboards yeah and then two squats on uh, escher rocket bikes you know which has to glee size so it fits the theme perfectly and then, then as well as all doing all this, you were also embarking on a much bigger modelling project than anything by making yourself <laughs> into Doctor Octopus. Yeah, so uh, my kid's massively into Spider Man, and um, I just figured years ago I did a, a, a Halloween costume which was made out of all these cable armors that you get underneath tables. Mm-hmm. Uh, it worked really well as a quick Halloween thing. I was like, I could do that again, and, you know, scare the snot out of him when he comes upstairs. Okay. <laughs> I ordered everything on eBay and nothing came. For like- <laughs> We're on our little um, yeah. our Facebook Messenger chat. We were hearing like about this for months. Saga of, uh, <laughs> guess how many of them turned up this time out of 17? Well, I'm going to yeah. guess a maximum of three. Well, that's too high. It was two. Yeah. That sort of thing. It was just every single thing was just crazy, wasn't it? it? Nothing went through. It was like I ordered dungarees, trousers would turn up, and then <laughs> going, well, what's wrong with trousers? <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting and they're going, well, we'll give you a discount on trousers. And I'm like, I'd like to buy dungarees, please. <laughs> it was just, it was the most weirdest thing. So my experience of eBay has always been, you just go on, you see something you want, you click it, you buy it and it arrives and it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Things were well, like, I'd wait two weeks and then they would cancel it and say that I've asked for a refund. And, uh. <laughs> but it got <laughs> built in the end and, and we ended up at Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I was just going to build it to scare the kid and then do some Halloween stuff with him and uh and you said we should go to comic con why didn't i think of that you know so we took him he dressed up as spider-man and everywhere he went there was other spider people you know so he was running around just going hi i'm peter parker and (laughs) (laughs) for reference your son is five right now uh it was your your and his first comic con so yeah he had a great time he got to meet batman iron man there was lovely spits with like darth vader's interacting with him you know you join the stick (laughs) Like, I've never joined the Sith. And it was like crossed arms, like I'm all upset. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was also, that costume went down really well. So I have been before. So I was sort of being uh, uh, present monkey and photo goblin and guide. Um, we couldn't yeah. walk more than about 10 metres without someone stopping you for a photo. Yeah, that was, uh, I didn't expect it to be that popular. I thought, <laughs> what? I mean, a lot of the people that did come up and say, can I get a picture, were people in Spider-Man costumes. I, I was expecting that. Yeah, it just seemed like almost like loads of people with cameras were just like, oh, can I get a quick picture? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. You know. Yeah, it was crazy. It went really, really well. Lou did not understand the, the objective when people say, can I have a picture? He'd start running in circles around and doing, doing great hoses. <laughs> yeah. Everything except, like, can you just do a static pose? Yeah, of course, Dad. And then he'd run off and go, okay. <laughs> yeah, wrangling <laughs> wrangling a five-year-old on the busiest day of Comic-Con was a whole two, two-man two job. Yeah, you did great chasing <laughs> him down. So I had all these arms. So Ian was like, oh, I'll get him. <laughs> We bumped into a few people there. We uh, saw the usual suspects, some War- Warhammer um, cosplayers. We saw uh, Lou Sugden was there wearing. So 
Alf Hild Windrunner, who's a Warhammer cosplayer, was there doing Valkyrie the Bloody, but she's built a sister battle costume, which Lou Sugden was there wearing. So there was a load of people there in, in Warhammer cosplay. But yeah, it was... I've never seen anything like it. I think part of the fact that all your your entire costume was hand built as well, like people were really impressed. They really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was a DIY thing. Um, I was going to three D print the claws, and you gave me the printer, and then it was just going to be like the amount of time to get them. In the end, I just decided I'd just buy litter pickers and put them on the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got four litter pickers, sprayed them silver. So finally, then in this odyssey of projects. Uh, we're playing Heresy again. Yay! So, yeah, Nathan, as a few people mentioned, uh, Nathan, who we game with regularly, has decided that we should get some more Heresy in by playing through the Siege of Chthonia campaign that comes in the book. I mean, none of us have um, uh, Sons of Horus, but fine. So uh, we had our first game last night. Uh, you, you, Russ and you were playing, Gary? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a fun game. Um, yeah. It didn't help that I had incredibly bad dice rolls on the first turn and forgot rules, but we both forgot lots of rules. Oh, um, yeah. But it was just like, yeah, I, I did a lot of damage to his army, but just, yeah, couldn't couldn't shift his Terminators. I think that one of the big differences was his Terminators lived and mine died from that <laughs> one squad of yours. Yeah, you did roll and, um, ones on turn one. <laughs> it was... It was yeah, so like turn one was crazy. <laughs> After that, it was all right. But then um, I think as well, I started rushing because I realized we weren't... I was. I had the stratagem to let us play a fifth turn, but I realized it was going to be useless to me anyway. So I started <laughs> doing things that I thought weren't particularly wise to try and get lucky and force a win. But um, yeah, it finished up. Um, I did manage to kill your warlord, actually, which I made, re- re- made me realize, oh, actually, I've got another one more victory point from that. But my, my robots in this one, my two Iron Circle robots, rampaged around the battlefield killing everything, didn't they? Like, they're the only ones who achieved anything, I think. <laughs> oh, apart from my one apothecary who single-handedly fought off um, three land speeders. Their, their, their four of it say, was really good against, like, they took a lot of hits from two land raiders and six melter shots, and they came out of it, like, with, what, two wounds gone? Like, it was ridiculous. Um, the length of that game, though, I was glad you didn't do a fifth turn. We, we, I turned up yeah. uh, an hour and a half late because I was late at work. Set up, me and Nathan set up and played our entire game. And, and you still were going for half an hour after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's largely, um, I haven't played loads recently and Gary hasn't played at all for ages. Yeah. And so there was a lot of checking things. Um, but I think that's, that's like, and, and we made, both of us made mistakes. I forgot to do things. Um, Gary, you forgot to do things. But I think that's half the point of why Nathan suggested, hey, let's play a campaign. Yeah, yeah Nathan and I realized um, we, we played a game and neither of us, like, we, we didn't, like, have a horrible time and get narky each other or anything. But we were both like, we didn't really enjoy the game as much as we should have done because we both realized how many rules we had forgotten and gotten yeah. wrong. So I think, yeah, playing playing a few games semi regularly, I because I, I really enjoy Horus Heresy. Yeah. So I don't want to like get to a point where I stop enjoying it because every time I play it, it's been so long since the last time that I can't remember anything. Yeah. So I'm starting to come around to reactions a little bit, but <laughs> it still seems like one of the things that I'm yeah. But I've, is that because I reminded you about your Wolf Special reaction last night, so that your Terminators can charge my tactical squad and, and win you the game? Yeah. Uh, and um, the fact that the rules are over three books now, like with that campaign and the thing, you, you, you're over four books because you've got a Mechanicum book as well. Well, I didn't bring the Mechanicum last night, actually, but yeah. Um, and actually, then there's the new campaign book just come out as well. And yeah, it's getting a bit silly with how many books I have to carry. I mean, Nathan's made the wise choice of ripping his books into pieces and only bring in the bits of rules that he actually needs. And I'm, I'm close to doing the same, although I, I have made myself a little booklet that just has all my own units in as a sort of cheat. Mm. I don't know what to call it. Like not a cheat sheet exactly, but I, um, I think you should all do what I do, which is just um, uh, bring the Amiga codex and your battle scribe print out and then rely on someone else yeah. to have the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, yeah. so I also play heresy. My one's been a bit different cause I've been away a lot. So yeah, I've done, I've done once around the world since we all last saw each other, um, apart from last night when we all last saw each other. I've been to, I went to Hong Kong for fun on my way uh, to Sydney. So I was doing a show in Sydney um, two weeks, lovely outdoor show, and they were flying me, the, the flight went through Hong Kong and I have some friends in Hong Kong. So I had a few days gap. Uh, one of the things I did on that day was I got a lovely walking tour of Hong Kong from Robert Rath, the Black Library author. 
uh, who we've had on the channel before. So it's lovely uh, hanging out with Rob uh, and visiting all the sites of Hong Kong, which was really nice. Uh, and then my friend, uh, my friend who just started working for Hong Kong Disney, uh, took me on a tour of Hong Kong Disneyland. So that was quite fun. Then I went to Sydney for two weeks. Didn't really do any hobby things in Sydney. Did a show there. And then I had the longest Tuesday ever uh, where I left Sydney at 10 a.m., flew backwards around the world for 14 hours to Vancouver, and then another flight down to Seattle. Uh, and then by the time I got to my hotel, I'd left Sydney at 10.30 a.m. on a Tuesday. I arrived at the hotel after 18 hours travel at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> Very strange experience. I think I'm a, I'm a day older or younger. I'm not sure now. In Seattle, I did another show, so I didn't do any hobbying at all. What I did get to do in Seattle, though, there are two things I did get to do in Seattle. The first is I went to an actual real-life American Barnes & Noble, and I bought Blitz Bowl. So <laughs> finally, there is we own a copy of a Blood Bowl game that lives up to its own tagline of being fast-paced. Hey! Yay! <laughs> We can use half the amount of models and half the amount of rules, and therefore you can actually play it like a fast-paced game, apparently. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Um. <laughs> so Blitz Bowl. <laughs> uh, the other thing I did is I went to... Um, one of the things I did while I was out there is I managed to find a nerd convention to go to. Uh, I went to a thing called Geek Girl Con, which was really interesting. It's a big nerd convention aimed at improving diversity. It's, it was really interesting to see like the differences between something like Comic-Con in the UK and something like that in Seattle. There was still a lot of... What you tend to find is that a lot of the places in the Utah UK are quite often mostly almost like trade shows. A lot of the focus on the UK cons is on like buying stuff. What was weird about this is there wasn't that much of that. There was like one floor of independent sellers and then pretty much everything else was like panels and showings of work in progresses. There was a lot of cosplay. It was really interesting the difference in cosplay. Like there was loads more cosplay than you would see in a UK convention, even at Comic-Con. A higher proportion of people had dressed up those those cosplays were not nearly as advanced as maybe some of the ones you'd see um, at the big comic cons. It's like you know, uh, which is shouldn't really surprise. Like culturally, people are more up for doing a stupid dress up thing. But um, whereas I guess <laughs> I guess here you tend to find that very few people are up for doing it, and if they do do it, they really worry about it being absolutely perfect. So I don't know. It was interesting. It was a nice day off. I did that, and then I came back. Um, and since then. I've done basically the same things you've already heard about. I, I, I went to with Gary. We went to SumpCon, which was really fun. I took my Arbites again. Um, played. I thought I'd only get a day, game or two a day, but I actually played seven games. So, well, I played Peachy. Played Peachy and his Escher in a shootout, which was quite fun. Um, I played Chris, who is one of the SumpCon guys, uh, with his Van Sar. I played a lovely arena match. I didn't. So I didn't do the uh, campaign at all. I couldn't be bothered with track. It's already a complex game. And with seven games, I couldn't be bothered doing all the upgrades. So I just bought spare models. As inevitably, all the other gangs would get more powerful over the weekend. I could just bring extra models. So Lady Hera Helmore, in her leopard skin coat, actually made her first appearance on the tabletop in an arena fight against some Goliaths. So she actually and survived the whole game. She'd won the game. She's, she's quite terrifying. Um, the ruler of Necromunda. <laughs> Obviously, fighting and not just the, because she's painted as Pat Butcher. Not only because she's painted as Pat Butcher, she's she's pretty good. Um, so she made her first appearance. But yeah, it was really fun. It was it was really good. Uh, so I did a bit of that, and then I obviously have been learning some new toys, which we know about. Uh, and then I um I've been planning a couple of things. So we played the Heresy games, which was really nice. Got the white scars out again. Uh, Nathan had a fun time destroying my uh my speeders. Uh, I will eventually paint some jet bikes. And then the final thing I've been looking at is Imperium Maledictum, um, which is the new 40k role-playing game by yeah. Cubicle 7. So uh, news on that to come, but we are totally intending to maybe play that at some point on stream. At some, well, not even on stream, we might do it in real life uh, at some point near Christmas. So when I get back from the next trip, I'm going away for another three weeks. And when I finally get back from that, I will actually have time at home. And we can get into doing some more of the Heresy campaign, because you guys will be a bit ahead of me. And we can all play some stupid Christmas Imperium Maledictum. And maybe <laughs> even by then we'll be building an army. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's kind of us, isn't it? That's a long one, but we've all been doing a load of stuff. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am kind of looking forward to, like, having a bit of a project again, you know? Yeah, me too. Like, yeah. a, like a simple I thing. I've had a project, but it's been less focused than this makes it. 
Yeah, this ha- having yeah. the having a new episode coming up that you've got to have yeah. something painted for definitely does help yeah. um, actually get things done. We've all gone back into our. We'll do a little bit of that and a little bit of this ways. But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it'd be nice. So whatever whatever happens, we'll keep people updated. I guess uh, we might be starting this as soon as a few weeks from now. Uh, it might take a bit longer, but we. I guess the plan at the minute is to, in some way, if we possibly can, fit in both uh, Legionnaires Imperialis and old world at some point in the next six months depending on when they come out but thanks everyone lovely to see you all on 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 camera again and i guess we'll be catching up in a few weeks i'm off to uh riyadh for three weeks um i'll see you all when i get back and uh we will continue on the tale of four gamers epic see you later thanks everyone Bye. 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 Bye.